everyone and thank you for attending this webinar. My name is Sophie Mello and I am a Rio Tinto trained mining engineer and metallurgist who currently consults for Datamine. Born and raised in the Pilbara region of Western Australia, I am passionate about the mining industry, especially in terms of safety, the environment in which we operate and the people. This webinar will cover several of the newer Studio OP 3.0 features, including the lift section, the updated design panels, roads, geotech, legends, and templates. We recommend you stay for the duration of this webinar. The pit design currently in the viewing window is a demo data set with the following design parameters. We have varying face angles between 60 and 80 degrees, bench heights of 10 meters, varying burn widths between five and nine meters, road gradients of 10% and road widths of 20 meters. This is a copper gold pit. So the first thing I will be demonstrating is the lift section. So I'll give a quick overview of the bench section for those who are unfamiliar and then I'll jump straight into the lift section. So the bench section, everyone should be familiar with. It's been with us for a couple of iterations of the Studio OP Auto Pit design. Essentially, it allows you to clip using different benches and scroll up and scroll down. So as you can see, it just allows you to just double check all your grades and it also allows you to double check all your roads and widths. So it's actually quite handy. Now we'll be switching over to the auto dump design just to give you a quick idea of the new dump lift section. So. So as you can see, the bench section has swapped to the lift section, but you can still use the same clip using lifts to do the exact same design checks for your roads. Please note that these particular lifts are 15 meters where the benches are actually 10 meters. So you can have a completely different bench heights and lift heights. So that's actually also very, very handy. So I will be taking you now through the auto pit design panels. The design panels have been reconfigured so that all your initial design parameters are shown at the start and then all the more advanced features such as your adaptive roads are shown in drop down menus. This prevents needlessly scrolling up and down this particular panel. Uh, it's just far easier to use. Although that being said, you do still have the um, recalculate and make design surface toggles at the top that I use quite frequently. So all these toggles, I've shown you the planning model toggle just then. Uh, we've also got show design surfaces and show design strings. These all function as previous. The only thing I would probably take a moment to note is scenarios. Scenarios are really handy. They allow you to swap between older versions of the pit uh, and design parameters that you've tried and have decided against and the newer designs of your pit. So you can try different pit designs. If they work, keep them. If, they, if you're not that happy with them, you can discard them as an obsolete scenario. You can also use scenarios to check things like geotech, but that is a separate area that I will be going into shortly. So we also have patterning in the conditioning panel uh, and also burn papering panel. So for example, you can set for every second bench a max slope change of say 0.3. You can apply that. Um, quickly recalculate and redo the surfaces and you can check what the difference in your two designs are just by 
a quick couple of clicks. It's actually very, very handy. Firm tapering, similar, except you have the option of selecting the road you wish to use your tapering for. Inside tapering distance of 150. And then again, quick recalculation and those parameters now set in your design. I'll just set these back to the original values. Okay, so the advanced panel allows you to set the road gradient side. So in this case, the default we have set it is to steepest. So that means that regardless of which side your road gradient is steepest, you will never exceed the gradient that you have set for your roads. So that's just really, really handy. Especially when your roads curve around sharp corners such as at the base of this pit. Okay, and that leads us into the adaptive road section. So I've just come back to the original auto pit design panel just to teach you a little bit more about the changes to our road designs. So these road designs are really handy. We've now got a new user interface so you can very quickly change and hit recalculate and see how that adjusts your gradient. You can even change the start point. So and with a couple of clicks, you can just see what your design changes. You can also adjust using the elevations. So if I wanted a higher elevation, I can do that. And it'll just consistently adjust your road to basically where you want. You can actually adjust both elevations. So you can check it all the way to the top of the design. Or you can bring it back to where abouts I generally end my road, which is the crest of the road. There we go. So it's very easy to change and adjust the roads and then regenerate the surfaces. It's very easy and very, very quick. Please note the roads all obey the geotech uh, constraints that have been set previously. Speaking of geotech, I'm going to switch us over to scenario one. And I'm just going to show you the differences between the geotech areas previously and the way the geotech is calculated now because there is a slight difference. So I'm just going to adjust this design slightly so I can show you the base parameters. I'm just going to beef up the points so I can show you the differences on each side of this square. So this square basically has three sides which are dead straight and it has one side that has been conditioned using edit, insert by length, so that we have equal spaced points all along this line. If you show design strings and show design surface, you can actually see that the geotech parameters are now propagating all the way up this wall uh, at far greater levels of detail than on the other walls. So if you want better geotech control, uh, my suggestion is simply to put additional points on your pit constraints. So that's a really handy feature for those who are looking for uh, geotech areas which are difficult or troublesome. Legends, okay.
So this particular pit uses quite a few legends. You've seen our AU legend that's applied to our block model, but we've got some more nifty geotech legends. So we've got um, an op color legend that's been created based on the type. We've got a geotech zone based on geotech regions, and we've also got slope, which is based on the dip. So to look at these in practice, I will show you in the actual design table. So you can see the dip and the type. This is simply what's being read. An interesting thing about this is it's not actually your block model that's being read. It's actually your design files. So there is some data in the design files that we're now using to do things like check geotech parameters and assign different colors. So this leads into my favorite part of this presentation, which is the templates. So we can adjust all of the colors in our templates to a set standard, and that can change depending on which company you're at. Each company can set their own design standards based on the color selection. And the design standards can be double checked pretty much the same way as any other color selection. You don't have to stick to the data mine default color selection for any of your auto pit designs. Another nifty feature, my personal favorite, is a design check. So this design check feature is rather awesome because you can basically check your walls and see which of your walls are green, so good, or orange, so out of design parameters or in a transition zone between your set design parameters. You can also do things like check your roads in road gradients in this particular design template. So the templates are really handy if you, for example, want to show people your design and say these are the areas that I am focusing on or these are the areas that Geotech may have an interest in. You can quite easily show people. You can also bring up your planning model and your design check will also affect your planning model if you have it set. So you can show people your different design or geotech areas and how they're impacting your wall as you go up and down your bench lifts. So I will now show you how you basically apply different templates. So you can apply labels. In this case, we have grad percent applied on the strings. So that's your check for your roads. Design surfaces have ooh, slope and dip. There's no labels displayed, but it's basically a legend color for this particular one. So yeah, you can go through and apply each your design strings can have different legends, your design surfaces, design solids, planning model constraints and fixed roads can all have different uh, legends and you can import and export your templates. So you can basically show people and hand around templates that you think are good for your particular uh, project. So I'd like to thank you all for taking the time to have a look at my new features. We very much appreciate feedback, so feel free to keep in touch. Uh, this is Sophie Mellor. Thank you for coming and please enjoy the rest of your day.